Future Cash Show. Brought to you by the Club of Amsterdam. Hey Futurists, it's me, Katie Aquino, also known as Miss Metaverse, and welcome to the Future Now Show, brought to you by the Club of Amsterdam. We have a great show for you today. Joining us from Singapore is author and professor James M. Dorsey. Hi James, how are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. So tell me about water in Africa. Water is obviously a major problem in Africa. It's a major problem for a number of reasons. One is, of course, climate change, which is not an exclusively African issue, but Africa is uh, severely affected by uh, climate change. Look at issues like desert, desertification. Uh, it's also one of the continents where you have the highest percentage of the population that do not have access to uh, safe and uh, secure water. That's partly a question of management. It's partly a question of corruption. It is issues, however, that can be fixed the policy issues rather than issues of uh, of determination. With other words, there's nothing we can do about it. How do we try and halt it from getting worse? Now, what do you think the differences of opinion are when it comes to water and this issue with Africa? Um, do you believe that here in America there's a different opinion on this issue versus over in Europe or across the world in the East? I don't know that there are fundamentally different opinions with for example, between the United States and Europe, or between the United States, Europe, and Asia, I think there are various people who have different solutions to water. Keep in mind that water is a very emotional commodity. It's very much like gold in, uh, in opposition to other commodities. Both water and gold are uh, commodities to which one attributes all kinds of mythical, religious, other attributes, which you don't attribute to copper or oil or whatever. Uh, and that's one. The other thing, of course, is there's no life without water. There's life without gold. There's life without copper. But you don't have water. You die a very horrible death. So uh, that means that in the solutions, you do have to look at ensuring that everybody has access to water, also those who can least afford it. Uh, and it, and you have to define it as a human right or as a basic right which you would not define, again, copper or oil or whatever. Um, and um, that's true across the globe. The problem is that, of course, uh, Africa, together with some parts of Asia, are, the, are, are those that have uh, the least developed countries and therefore the greatest problem. Right. So what are some of the biggest challenges when it comes to getting water to the African people? I think the greatest challenge is... Uh, Good governance. It's management. With other words, um, you have to have proper management, independent management. Um, there have been a lot of success stories. Privatization of water is a very controversial issue. Uh, Britain is actually the only country that has act, that has in fact privatized the asset rather than the management of water. But whichever way you go, you're going to have to bring in proper for management, and you're going to have to ensure, and that's why these kind of uh, attempts have more often than not failed in Africa, you're going to have to ensure that the regulator is truly independent. Um, in those cases where privatization of the management of, uh, of the asset uh, has been privatized, uh, in those cases where that has failed, it has failed because there was improper oversight. Right. So... What do you think is going to happen in the future? Because we have the, the glaciers are melting. We're having a lot of problems with climate change. So what do you think that maybe this is going to be like in, say, 50 to 100 years? My guess is it will be a lot better. But have, that's, that's easier said than done, of course. Um, first of all, the issue of glacier, glaciers melting, what have you, are issues of, of, uh, uh, of climate change. And those are not issues that Africa in and of itself can resolve. In fact, those are not issues that Africa has con a great control of. Um, and that's, but we do have a gr growing global awareness of the issue of climate change. And as we very slowly and, and torturously move towards better management of climate um, and environment, uh, Africa will benefit from that. More immediately, I think what you are seeing is, of course, is you're seeing a tremendous economic development in Africa. 
uh, you are seeing reduction of poverty. Uh, you are seeing economic growth. And that opens up opportunity as well as demands for greater uh, and better governance. And those are things that Africa can handle itself. Right, definitely. So what are some innovations that you think could possibly contribute to this water crisis in Africa? I mean, Meaning help resolve. Sure. I mean, you've got two levels here. One is governance, and that governance is straightforward. We all know what it takes to have good governance and what good governance means. Having said that, there are lots of technological developments and technologies that are being developed that at a micro level, a village level, a community level, uh, would enable access to uh, water, um, to safe and potable water, uh, at a cost that is uh, uh, that is affordable to those communities, and it really is a question of of deployment of those uh, technologies. And again, if you have good governance, uh, then there, there's also the political will to invest in and to distribute and to deploy such technologies. Right. So it all starts with the government, basically. Right. Well, it starts with the government, or you know, I take it a little bit broader. It starts with good governance, and good governance uh, is, to a large extent, uh, the government. You need the government for that. But it also involves the community. It's invo it involves business. It involves, as a matter of principle, all stakeholders. So, what are some other solutions do you think might help? resolve these water issues in the future with Africa and as well as the rest of the world? Well, I don't. I, I think this is where you have to look for the solutions. Uh, keep in mind, water, unlike oil, oil is a, f a finite commodity. You've used it once, that's it. It's gone. It's done. Water can be recycled, and it can be recycled at multiple levels. With other words, uh, you can recycle water for agriculture that may not be... Um, uh, potable, but it's good enough to be reused in agricultural environments. And you can recycle dirty water to be drinkable. Um, so, so that's really, again, and recycling is a, is a management and a technology issue. The other thing I think, I think, I think that you're seeing, and, and the Europeans were a leader in this, which is uh, to define water as a commodity that needs to be valued by the market. And if it's valued by the market, then it's a cost post. If you look back for a very long period of time for major companies, water didn't figure on the balance sheet. It didn't matter. It's very much like, you know, it used to be at, uh, in New York before uh, you put meters into apartments in New York. Before that, you didn't really care if the water was running or not. You were brushing your teeth and the phone rang and you just ran out and let the water run. Uh, you wouldn't have done that at the time with the lights in your apartment. You'd be turning them out in rooms where you're not using them because it was costing you money. Now you're doing that on water. And on average, uh, water consumption in New York has dropped from about 400 liters per person a day to 250 liters per person a day. So, in other words, if you start, uh, what that has led to is that major companies like Unilever, for example, Coca-Cola, other companies, are now looking at water as a cost post. And they're looking at water savings through the food chain, in other words, from all the way from the product that you buy in your supermarket to the farms and plantations and whatever in Africa where the raw materials are grown. Right. Right. So is there anything else you'd like to share about this topic of water in Africa and potentially the future, really? No, I think we've covered it fairly, fairly much. All right. Sounds good. Well, thank you for sharing that information with me. That was definitely interesting because we don't really talk about this very often here in the United States or among my friends, I would say. Um, so thank you very much for that. And uh, we'd love to have you back again soon. Definitely. And thank you for joining the Future Now show. All right. So let's go build a better world. Pleasure. All the best. <laughs>